Well, a very good morning to everybody and welcome to the Real All Suites Hotel and Casino here in fabulous Las Vegas. This is the Las Vegas Men's Open, sponsored by the Rums of Puerto Rico. 96 players kicked off. These two making for a bid to get to the last 32. 100,000 in total purse and 30,000 up top to the eventual winner. I'll be bringing you all the action along with my colleague. He'll be bringing it to you from Los Angeles, Chris Reinhold. I'm Jim Weich, and Chris, welcome. You're up early this morning as well. Yeah, everyone's really hyped for this match, and I can't wait to sweat it and uh, give you guys some commentary on my thoughts. Well, I've got a three-hour time change, and I want to let all our viewers know that Chris's voice bounces off the satellite to me, my voice off the satellite to him. So there is a little bit, a little bit of a lag between our uh, our commentary. So if we do tend to talk over each other every now and then, please uh, accept our apologies for that. Can't be helped, unfortunately. But uh, I'm looking forward to this one as well. Daniel Masial from Poland. Uh, he probably wishes this was a basketball match instead of a pool match. He looks like he's about a foot taller than the younger Ko, Ko Ping Chung. Yeah, Ko to break off for the first one. He had a picture-perfect lag. Up, nearly froze the ball, and Daniel didn't really make a bad lag. But, you know, Ko's was just that much better. So he's off to break, looking for the one ball in the side. And he gets it. Mission accomplished. Now is he sat up nice on the two? What do you think here, Jim? Do you think he can cut the two in the upper left-hand corner and avoid the scratch? Well, that's the key. If he can, that cue ball is going to be tracking right down towards the three. So a lot of promise in this if he can avoid that right-hand jaw of that top corner pocket. He's queuing up. and Tough to tell from the angle we're looking at, Chris. Yeah, I think, I think if it did go, he'd already be down shooting it. So maybe we're going to see another safety from him right now. He's queued up at it twice. He wants to attack here, but sometimes you've got to take your medicine. So it looks like defense only. He might be going in between the five and the pocket and going down towards the eight. See, just like that. Hit it a little soft, and he kind of sold out a shot here. Let's see if Daniel can capitalize. Yeah, watching Daniel warm up as well. Very good potter, this tall left-hander. And what a strong contingent coming to Las Vegas from Poland as uh, we've seen in years past the defending champion Viktor Zelensky well, the path to the eventual $30,000 check goes right through him he is a defending champ that was a very well struck shot there Yeah, short siding himself on the three, and that cue ball was tracking right to the corner pocket, so the speed of that shot was everything, Chris. Yeah, he might have to run into the nine here, or the ten, just to hold the cue ball so he doesn't have to hit the three ball too hard to go around, going around the angles. So, should looking good on this one. Yeah, and such a good shot, that opener. It's laid the foundation for this opening rack for Daniel. Yeah, going from the five to the seven here, he wants to get either straight in so he can draw right back where the cue ball is now or slightly to the right of where he is now so he can have a better angle. You don't want to be on the wrong side of this ball. I 
think you got there. Yeah, he looks good. As I said, the winner of this will move into the last 32. There will be somewhat of a redraw where they really don't know who they'll be playing. And it is single elimination, last 32, correct? It is. And the format changes as well. Here, if it's tied one set apiece, we go to a shootout. In the last 32, if it's tied one set apiece, it's got to be tied 3-3 in the third and deciding set before we see a shootout. So that's a change there as well. Uh, no doubt about it. This is a high-powered match, this one. Yeah, both these players have both have all the tools to win this event, so it's going to be a good match, and I, I think we're going to see a lot of shots that are very surprising and a lot of shots that, you know, just executed very well at a very high level. Yeah, and like anything else in the game of pool, it's really about what you do. You can't worry about what your opponent does. All the pressure comes from within. The first rack to the Polish star, and he'll break in rack number two. It's always easy to say, isn't it, Chris? And, and I talk about it a lot. I, You know, I played uh, professional snooker for about 17 years, and, you know, you get out there under the TV lights, and, you know, it's, it's a real difficult feeling to explain, and... You know, all, your focus tends to kick in and your concentration. And you know the, the nerves are jingling a bit, but you, you kind of embrace it, don't you? And I guess they always say the key is to try and enjoy it. Easier said than done. Yeah, I mean, it's hard to be in the moment when you're playing these events. But when you look back on it, you kind of wish that you were in the moment a little more and enjoying it, soaking it up. Because, you know, these it's not going to last forever. And, uh, you know, I think people are a little too, uh, they're a little too hard on themselves sometimes when really they just try to be in the moment and do your best. And if you do that, then you just, you can go, you can go to sleep at night with a clear conscience. Yeah, a lot of power and don't know if the one goes by the eight into the corner. If it does, this is an opportunity for Daniel. Yeah, he might also be able to do a combo here. Looks like the combo is on. He's going to have to overcut the one to the pocket slightly, but I feel like it's a good shot. Overcut it too much. Yeah, it came with an element of risk, no question. And this is the first real chance that Coping Chung has had. Not that easy to get from the one to the two either. Two only available to the top left corner as we look. The, the shot key. Oh, wow, that was no. a beautiful stroke there. Played in between the 6-7. I, I didn't see that window personally, but he, he did, so that's all that matters. Yeah, again, a little like Daniel in the opening rack. The first shot really laying the foundation here. And now, given the talent at the table, and again, we do tend to think these guys are machines when they're out there, but you'd really expect them to win the rack right here. Yeah, it's, it seems like it's set up for him to do that. Uh, just have to make sure you get good on the six to the seven, so you can have a, a good angle to get to the eight. Ideally straight in on the seven.
Have you played either of these two before, Chris? You know what's funny is I have played so many tournaments with the same players for so many years, and I've never played Co. Daniel and I are one and one. Uh, he beat me in the shootout the last time we played. I think it was in Austria. But Co and I have never, I've never had the fortune of playing Co yet. But I'm sure it'll happen soon. was a bit of a mistake he tried to draw that above the nine and going into the nine there's a little fortune he can get through the eight that could have gone wrong there I mean, this is probably as good an indication as you're going to get that there are really no physical attributes to what makes a, a, a world-class pool player. I mean, being strong from the neck up is really where it counts. But Ko has leveled it up here, 1-1 one, one against Daniel Maciel. I mean, he's, if I'm going to guess he's probably about 120 pounds, if that, Ko Ping Chung. He comes with a powerful game. Yeah, I guess a game. little, a little, I guess a little under that, but yeah, about around that. Uh, his timing and stroke through the ball is just so pure. It's hard that, you know, he could draw a full table better than guys twice his size. And again, that mental toughness, you know, a lot of these players are traveling all over the world goes without saying there's a lot of sacrifices to living out of a suitcase totally unlike the professional golf tour where a lot of them I think they a lot of their chefs travel with them so they're eating the food that they like and these guys you know they're they're looking for a good restaurant as soon as they hit town so here we go rack number three one one I expected this to be close Yeah, with two monsters like this, it's just definitely just who flinches first, right? Well, that is an ideal break. And it looks like he might be able to get the three past the five, but park that cue ball in the middle. Nine into the side, definitely on the one. Two over the center pocket, just question whether or not that three will slither past that five into the corner. A guilt-edged opportunity here for Co. Yeah, this three ball, I'm not sure if it passes, but we're going to find out soon. Uh, I think he's going to go a little further on the two, so he might be able to break it out a little bit, but we will see. I think he might also be able to put the carom on the five. I'm not sure if it's possible, but I, it looks like the, four, the three ball goes the way he's looking at it. getting it set in his mind exactly how he wants to attack the four. Keeping it simple. Limiting the movement for that cue ball. Usually a formula for success in this game. How effortless it is for him to go around the table with that good timing and pure stroke he has. It's beautiful to watch. A little straight on this one, though.
It looks like all you can do if you're Daniel is just wait your turn. Yeah, you got to stay positive. Be ready when it comes, if it comes. But this was a clinical break and run out. Never in danger. And it looked ominous right from the break. And he took it home 2-1. Koping Chung over Daniel Masial. The race to four. Again, it's two sets. Each set a race to four. And if they go one set apiece, we get the shootout. I've had two shootouts already in the matches I've commentated. Yeah, I've only had the one shootout with Allison Fisher and Simi Chen last night when I was commentating with our buddy Mika Eminem. And it was amazing to watch two, you know, Amazing, just some say the greatest of all time women's players go at it. It was awesome. Well, for me, it's uh, it's lunchtime in Toronto. For you, still breakfast. Three hour time change between us. You're in the same time zone as. The guys at the table. Rack number four. Well, he was looking for a carbon copy of the last, but still ball down off the break. The one ball passes. It must have, he's calling it. Well, then there is a chance. Because the two looks like it's available. <laughs> Three over the corner pocket. Yeah, the one goes. Certainly doesn't have a full pocket, does he? So the bottom half. Tricky shot to start. One disappears. Yeah, once this one disappears, it'll open up everything, so it seems. Boy, if I'm a Daniel Massial fan, these are very ominous signs I'm seeing from Coping Chung, because he looks like he's brought his A game to the table this morning. Watch out for that six ball with his shirt. That was the ref was looking, but came awfully close. See how clean that came back? That was beautiful. Yeah, he seems to have the speed of the table down. Seems like he's advanced AI. He's just learning from every shot. <laughs> downloading information yeah, you one shot at a time. Yeah. A, that's a, a good way to put it, Chris. It, it certainly looks like he's about as well prepared for this match as he could be. Yeah, I heard he had a, has a few siblings that play pretty well, too. I don't know if you've heard of them, but <laughs> you know, I've heard about them. <laughs> yeah, his, his, older, his older brother's pretty handy. But a lot of people think he's the best of the family so far. We'll have that discussion in a few years' time. 
Well, I, either way you choose to go in the argument, I'm sure it's hard to, you know, either way is a strong case. He's making this easy on us, huh, Jim? You know, I'll tell you what. He's found a gear, hasn't he? He just doesn't look like missing. 3-1. Ko Ping Chung in front of Daniel Masial. He'll break to try and close the first set out. And again, You're one mistake. Just, yeah, he's uh, he's on his bike for sure. But just that one mistake from Daniel, the one eight combination. Since then he's been in his chair. Two break and run outs. And that's the great thing about this format, Jim, is that he's still not out of this. Quite a few fans that got up early to watch this match, as I can see. Yeah, we're on table number one. All the 10 a.m. matches bringing about the guys. I think you and I slide over to table number two, noon local time for a ladies' match. Oh, wow, that'll be fun. Oh no, that cue ball got kicked. Yeah, that's about the only thing that was gonna get him away from the table is a slice of misfortune. Kicked by the nine and then summarily bumped into the corner pocket by the five. Well, we'll see how long he spends in his chair. Yeah, Daniel's gotta take advantage of this unfortunate kick that he got. And uh, you have to do your best with it and kind of just take what the table gives you and, you know, hope that your fortune kind of turns around, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, he's probably looking at that side pocket and thinking, well, I couldn't have found that angle if I'd have tried. Yeah, if we had a prop day, bet saying that if he could do it again, I don't think he could. Yeah, no kidding. At the end of the day, though, that's a mistake. We really didn't need to bring that side pocket into the equation at all. So, Ko didn't have to spend too long in his chair. In a fun Daniel's game, you guys can positive. play at home. <laughs> a fun game that you guys could play at home is every time I cut Jim off, just drink a sip of water, you'll be hydrated by the end of the match. <laughs> <laughs> well, I warned them all. It was probably with your bouncing off the satellite and my bouncing off the satellite, our uh, our audio, you know, there's about a two second gap in there, and it's almost impossible for us not to talk over each other at some point. <laughs> I guess so. I know the fans would get pretty drunk <laughs> listening to us, Chris. <laughs> so you play the six ball on the side with the correct angle about where he's pointing at now. See, the thing is, he actually tells us where he's going to go every time, so he's kind of making us obsolete, isn't he? <laughs> well, as you know, there's always a lot of permutations they're going through a rack. Different players are going to see shots differently and positional angles differently. But bringing it home, that's what it's all about. How you get there doesn't really matter. Yeah, I guess so. I think he's going in the corner here. He switched from the side. 
little too much angle from the side. And this corner just brings him naturally up to the seven. That's beautiful. Do you think he can slide the eight past the nine? Yeah, he's having a little look at it now. I think it will go. Looking to close out this set. Yeah, and in so doing, Garrison guarantees himself no worse than a shootout, even if he lost the second set. He's been very punishing. Every mistake that's brought him to the table, he's parked Daniel in his chair. And I do believe that Daniel will be having a better set this upcoming set, trying to come back because he's only had two shots this whole set, missing the 1A combo and then missing, well, he scratched from ball in hand. So I think it could only go better from him from here on out. Yeah, again, that's why I talk about staying positive and the statistics are pretty well gonna give you the lay of the land here. It's been all Koping Chung just about in every facet. Biggest differential, how about balls pocketed 40 to 10? <laughs> Daniel's 10 probably all came in the first, the first rack. Well, they did. Run out percentage, 76%. Again, another statistic that tells you why the first set was one-sided. Well, the winner here will go into a redraw, so he won't know who he'll be playing in the last 32, but in the last 32, it's sudden death. As we said, the format changes somewhat in terms of the shootout. Only at 3-3 in the third and deciding set do you see the shootout then. But buckle in, set number two here in Las Vegas. Four ball in. Might be hard to reach for a left-hander on this shot, but he is about eight feet tall, so I think he'll be okay. I would have trouble reaching this even though I'm right-handed. <laughs> And again, you got to be careful not to foul, too. You're going to be leaning over a lot of balls. And he gets it this comfortably. He's like a gazelle. Very elegant. Very, very elegant. To pass the three, must. Our referee, one of the European Pocket Billiard Federation referees that have joined forces with the Predator Pro Billiard Series. Bringing world-class referees to the forefront in all these big high-profile events that Predator put on. Top-notch tournament here, for sure. They don't spare any expense. Well, Daniel looked like starting the second set out the same way he started the first set out. Winning the opening rack. I mean, you've got to tip your hat to him. 
He spent a lot of time in his chair to come back to the table and do the business as he looks like doing here. He can't say enough. Yeah, I'm curious if he's going to play the nine in the same pocket that he plays the eight. I'm going to figure that out. Guess not. Yeah, right about where he's holding his Q-tip. Just get the white away from that side cushion, make life easier. down and the opening rack in set number two goes to Daniel Massiol. Yeah, Again, looks like he's finally getting his brew. Yeah, he's got to try and keep Coe in his chair. Easier said than done, though. And I just received a, a notification from our colleague Mark White. He's in Thailand right now. He just let me know that Daniel was the runner-up to Carlo Beato in 2022 in Puerto Rico. I should have known that because I commentated that match. I don't know if I did it with Mark. If he's listening, I might have. It's, just, it's an age thing, Mark. I don't know what else to tell you. But uh, Daniel had a pretty good, uh, pretty good run in Puerto Rico just over a year ago. So no stranger with these high-profile matches and the TV lights. But thanks, Mark. Yeah, thanks for reminding me what I should have known. In 2015, I went to the World Junior Championships, and I competed in the 18 under division. And my first time seeing Daniel, he won the 16 and under division, I believe. Wow. Just, again, an ominous start in terms of how the second set is going because he's just broke dry and every chance for Ko Ping Chung here. It looks like the 3-7 is a combination to the corner and that looks pretty sad. So he won't have to do a lot in positioning that cue ball to attack that combination. Yeah, when you see when you see Ko kind of dance around the table and his cue ball goes so far and it's so easy, he actually uses a heavier cue. He uses about a 19 and a half, and he he picked up my cue one time and it was like an 18.8, .8. and he looked at me and he said, "Not heavy enough." <laughs> Maybe I should have listened to him. Well, he's a pleasure to watch, that's for sure. And I assure you all, he's making this game look a lot easier than it really is. Yeah, beautiful stun shot there. I was gonna hit this four and try to come off the rail a little bit so he has some angle from the five to the six. And I don't think he's gonna roll this in. I think he's gonna put a good stroke on it and follow through. Or he's gonna kill it? I think he's gonna kill stroke here. Yeah, beautiful. Yeah, thinking about three shots ahead. Yeah, he's got to get that cue ball 
away from that side cushion because he's going to want to draw the six back for the eight. That's what he was looking at with his Q-tip. I don't know if he's got straight enough to be able to do that. But I think it's straight enough to just draw straight back or at least to the middle diamond. A smooth stroke, accelerate through the ball. Yeah, I was going to say, he's going to have to leave himself the cut on this eight. So the cue ball is going to be traveling a little bit more than he would have liked. In position to the nine, not a formality. So you'd like to bet he gets there. God, how perfect was that line of travel? Beautiful. Squares it up in set number two. A set that would see him through to the last 32. Daniel trying to force the shootout. Chris, where do you play when you're at home? Do you have a, a home club that, uh, that you spend your time practicing at? So I'm based mostly in New Orleans, Louisiana right now. I play at a corner pocket and I play at a Buffalo's Billiards. And um, right now I'm in California. That's where I was born and raised, the Ventura. And that is a place called Sticks Billiards. And it's one of the only pool rooms around because a few of the other pool rooms closed because of COVID, sadly. Uh, Butera's Billiards and Hard Times, the famous Hard Times in Bellflower closed. So there's not a lot of pool in California, which is why I had to move to New Orleans because uh, there's a lot of pool going on there. and really good for lessons and the pool community is very large. Well, if you're ever up uh, in Canada and you make your way to Toronto, you've got to come and pay a visit to our club. We've got a nice club. It's called, it's a very shameless plug, by the way, and uh, excuse me for that, but the Corner Bank <laughs> is, uh, is a club I'm partners in. But uh, awesome. about 20,000 yeah, square to feet. Canada. Food's good, Chris, if you like good food. Look at the 10, track and four. Doesn't look like he's got a shot at the one. Yeah, I can promise you a good meal if you come and pay us a visit. Awesome, I'll have to make it, I'll have to put it on the calendar. Well, he certainly got, if he can get into the cue ball to where he can draw it and pull it over towards the nine, he certainly has a, a safety option. But he can see enough of this, he might be able to cut it in. No, oh, that's what he tried. Overcut it. Well, he's, at least we know he's human. Yeah, I think maybe he did that on purpose so that way his cover won't be blown. <laughs> Doesn't want to blow all his action. <laughs> That's right. All the action he already has. Probably so much. Probably about four <laughs> players in the world will play this guy. <laughs> Ten ball on the side. I think he's weighing up the run out. Looks like he might have half a pocket for the two.
Yeah, I personally would have went for the 10 ball there, I believe, but, uh, you know, different strokes for different folks. What's the weather like in Canada right now? Still cold? Well, it's it's pretty chilly. It's about, uh, well, I'm going to say about 50 degrees Fahrenheit. Uh, but the snow is gone. We had a little bit of snow. If you'd asked me that question a week ago, I'd have said you need a real warm jacket. But it's pretty nice. It's, it's unseasonably nice because I promise you, you don't really want to come and pay us a visit in February. Yeah, maybe I'll just play it safe and go during the summer. Well, if you're a golfer, I can get you on a couple nice golf courses too, so I may hold you to that, Chris. Sounds good. Pretty straightforward here from the 8 to the 9. Just maintain angle so we can get down to the 10. And uh, I think it's smooth sailing here. Yeah, needed to punish the mistake from Co. And he did just that. He's 2-1 in front. The second set. It's moving right along. Mistakes have been at a premium. I expected it to be very high caliber encounter between these two and it's living up to advanced billing and five events over the 10 day duration for predator and all the players we've got the Men's and ladies, Las Vegas Open. Then we've got the Apex Mixed World Doubles. I'm really looking forward to that. And then we close it all out with the World Ten Ball Championships. But as my colleague said, it is a feast on the felt. Another line I'm pinching from Mark White. Yeah, Mark comes with some good ones, doesn't he? Well, he's been swimming an awful lot, so he's getting very fit. And I'm a big, big believer in a, a sound body as a sound mind, because I was questioning his mind before he's gotten fit. And now, now are you really questioning it? <laughs> oh, yeah. No, no, I can't afford to question it anymore. He'll chase me down. <laughs> He's a good dude. So do you stun out in between the 9-5, or are you following in between the 9-2? Good question. Well, he knows he's got to leave himself a lot of angle to get back for the 3. So... I'd probably stun between the nine and the five, but I mean, either just personal preference. He can follow th follow this through too. He elects to follow through, and he stays below the two. He struck that really well, got through it really well. So do you? I mean, it's kind of like more of a stun shot here, where you go in between the ten six with a lot of right English, or he can travel in between the seven four. I think he's going to go the seven four route. Oh, those other options. He kind of, yeah, and well, he went with your first choice, kind of stunning into that side cushion. He took all those balls out of the equation, which I think was a pretty smart thing to do because he would have had to be real precise. And I wasn't sure the exact angle that he had. And cue ball just gets by where he's not hampered cueing over that nine. 
That wouldn't have helped his cause. He's 2-1 down in the second set, so I'd love to knock these in, get back to 2-2, and with the break, he'd definitely be back in the saddle. Yeah, I believe the last time we saw him break, was it when he got kicked in? No, 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 he has a game. I can't be him. Don't listen to me. <laughs> He's perfect on the five. Decided to go up and back down to let the stroke out. A little more comfortable that way. And trying to gauge speed instead of trying to slow roll it, but a weird spin. So we'll see what he does. I think he draws back, straight back, avoiding the side pocket. Right, his little angle, never mind. Camera angles playing tricks on me. Yeah, it looked straight, didn't it, from our overhead perspective? You know what I really like about Ko Ping Chung's game is how when he's when he's focused, he's got the balls there. He doesn't waste any time. He just gets down with it. He doesn't think too long and overthink shots you see that a lot he really keeps it simple I mean he's got a ton of talent and self-belief yeah the the times I tend to overthink is when I'm not prepared so I figure that if you're ever always prepared you just kind of instinctually go through what you think to be the shot and then learn from there Beautiful. two two attitude certainly coming into any match is is key it makes a big difference you know preparation a good friend of mine always you, you tend to remember things you've heard over the the length of your career and a friend of mine good very good friend of mine a fellow by the name of Kirk Stevens we got to number four in the world number four in the, the ranking world of snooker. He told me you, he went into every match ready to play the final frame. So that was how he mentally prepared. That's just yeah, something that uh, stuck Nick with me. Varner, uh, that, so Nick Varner told me that same advice, but for pool, he just said, I said, well, how do you focus the whole match? And he looks at me, thinks about it for about two, three seconds and said, you know, Chris, uh, every game is hill, hill. And he started laughing. And I said, uh, that's good advice. Yeah, exactly the same, just translated to the pool world. But it certainly allows you to go into a match, you know, as mentally tough as you can be. Again, there's our statistics. Not quite as one-sided as was the first set, but still certainly looking like it favors Co to this point. And 2-2. Two -two. Everything's under the magnifying glass now. One into the side. to the corner as yeah, well. Probably one, of the, probably one of the most consistent breaks I've seen. Yeah, he just wants to be sure exactly how he wants to attack this three. It doesn't look like it's got a pocket. Certainly if it does, it's only half a pocket at best. Well, he went for the combination. High risk, it would have been high reward. 
be less That's needed, probably, if nothing Twilight. else, Chris, that's a, a testament to the fact that Co just was unwilling to give the table up, even attacking a low percentage combination like that. One of the things that was taught to me at a young age was if the safe and the, you know, if, if going for it and playing safe is the same amount of difficulty, you might as well try to go for it. Of course, you can always get lucky with the safety. That's right. Ten ball, side pocket. Beautiful shot there. And he called the 10 into the side just in case, and that cue ball whiskered by that 10. And it wouldn't have been a long ways from cutting that 10 into the side. So what a call that one was from Daniel Massimo. How about the speed that he played that shot? You know, I'm interested to see whether the top pros kick or jump this ball. He could jump and try to play the three into like a, a straight back bank, but I feel like he thinks he has a better chance of kicking this in. Yeah, wow. Yeah, he's hit that almost perfect. Good speed too. And cut on this three. And if he can get that cue ball to the middle of the table, it's going to come with a lot of rewards. This might be the most important shot of the match here. Beak wins this game. He has a one and two game chance to push it to the shootout. Did he hook himself? Having a look to see if the seven passes tells me he must be able to see the five. Should be smooth sailing here. Stop forward a little bit and then draw back to the 10. He's got himself to the hill. And three two breaking. Waiting for that cue ball to stop. I guess if you bring those balls out onto the table a little prematurely, one of our new referees will jump all over you. Daniel, no. probably no stranger to the European tour, might be very familiar with how strict the European referees are. So you mentioned that you had uh, gotten a little bit of advice from Nick Varner. Nick is uh, a very dear friend of mine as well. I've spent a lot of time with him just about every corner of the world. And uh, he's just one of those guys that, you know, he's a very genuine person. You know, what you see is what you get. But he's also uh, the type of person that he's always going to throw you those little nuggets, isn't he, Chris? And 
someone very enjoyable to be around. Yeah, for sure. Totally agree. Good break there. Ten ball in the corner. Four or five tied up. See how he navigates the four and the five here. Yeah, the ten will come back onto the spot. So ten off the break. That's not a rack win, but an early ten is. And the four or five, that's got to be cause for concern right now for Daniel. The right hand side of the table. As we look now, that's the problem area. That's the insurance policy effectively for Coping Chung. And he's also a bonus in the fact that the three is quite a ways from the four. He's trying to run it into the three, and he didn't at all. No, he was trying oh, to get that three in, into a position where he uh, he might have been able to play from the two to the three. And I, I, I mean, you're absolutely right. He tried to hit that three full to land on the two, bump the three over closer towards the four. And then he's queuing right over the eight. Real error in judgment early. so nearly Hollywood if he would have just feathered that five and nudged the four down to the cushion and open he'd have been able to drop onto it off this three so close to being perfection Very unfortunate there. Came a little too wide, almost crashing the. Oh, off the point. Okay, that's how it went there. Yeah, very, very tough to hit a ball that well and get that kind of a roll. But maybe you can go two rails and put them right behind the five ball. Needs a rail. Hit a rail. I don't, I don't think he got one. That's going to be a foul. Ball in hand to Co. Co looking to make this hill hill. And hopefully for him, he won't have to do a shootout. <laughs> yeah, I was close to being the shot that you called, Chris. And I mean, that couldn't have gone a lot worse. I think Daniel in his chair right now is preparing for a Hill Hill match. He's hoping he gets a shot because Cole will be breaking at 3 3. But he has to expect him to clear up here. Did he get there? So he's either going to kill this ball with low left English or. Yeah, there we go. Spinning into it. Used all the pocket there. It's looking like 3-3. Three, three. Yeah, they've kind of exchanged racks in the second set. No one's put two together. Ping Chong will break in the seventh and deciding rack of the second set. And if he wins it, he is through to the last 32. If he doesn't, we've got a shootout. Match has been going on for almost exactly an hour. And 
we don't have a decision yet. Who is your money beyond in the shootout if you had to pick? You know what? I'd I'd have to favor Co. I think uh, I think he came into this match as a as a decided favorite. I mean, it's a, it's a short race. The format is is one that lends to upsets. But I I just think he's a little bit more used to the the high pressure that a situation like a shootout presents. He's hoping it doesn't get there. A the powerful break to no avail there. Ten ball side pocket. Yeah, I'm kind of shaking my head. If you got him. This might be the wrong person to let jump a ball. I've said a few times in commentary that I've never seen anybody jump better than Fedor Gorst. But watching Ko even just prior to this match, hitting a few jump shots. He might be a close second. This is makeable. Yeah, I totally agree. Oh, wow. We might have ourselves a shootout. See how Got a little fortunate to roll. <laughs> now, if you're Still Daniel, goes. you attack the combination here, Chris. I think so, because you can use the seven ball as a. It'll hold the cue ball there. Oh, he decided just to play it with draw, and that's just as good. Um, you got to be careful though trying to get these tight angles. If you're going to use high right into one and go in between the three and the five, you've got to be careful because it might lengthen out and go behind the eight. the four go by the seven into the top left corner he's got the angle on the three don't know whether he could draw this into the five but he can certainly run down table and back up towards the four and it definitely goes into the side and just a little short of what would have been ideal position have to try and just float this one in and make sure that he leaves the five to the bottom left corner as we look. 
I'm not really sure what else he could do. Except for that. Wow. Brave shot. Very courageous shot. Simplified matters by taking a risk. Certainly looking like we're going to be treated to a shootout. Still got a little work to do, though. Right eye dominant. He slides that chin right across the cue to get that right eye over the cue. And funny enough, most left handers are right eye dominant. Beautiful out here. We thought it was going to be tough. He made it look easy. Yeah, that one bank shot on the four where he fell short of ideal position. I mean, that was the, the shot for me. A lot of courage. And the 10 down in the shootout it is. One set apiece. So now they'll hit the reset button. Take a short break. And uh, I don't know about you, Chris, but I'm going to follow suit and take a short break as well. We'll be back in a very short time. Don't go away. We're back at the main stage here, just awaiting the players' return. And Chris, I don't know whether or not you've taken a quick break. But there's the situation with regards to the shootout. They'll start with that first box and four innings. If the score is still tied after those four innings, four shots each two in each side then the box is reduced by half the size and the, de the degree of difficulty increased at least twice 
Yeah, I'm back from the break, Jim. This is going to be a very, very interesting shootout, and I think the first person to miss a ball is going to be the one that loses. Well, they were both taking a few shots at this 10, the spot shot for the shootout in practice. I mean, you, you really do need to master this shot because it just comes up so often. I mean, this is I my fifth match. And I've done three shootouts already now. Well, Chris, you asked me who I liked in the shootout. What about you? Who would your money be on? I have to favor Ko. I think he's going to hold up move slightly better under pressure. And I think his stroke is a little less jabby and a little more fluid, which tends to uh, work in that person's favor on uh, high intensity shots like this. Yeah, now in an interesting scenario with a right-hander and a left-hander, I mean, I would think the left-hander would favor the left-hand side of the table over the right-hand side. Just... Referee just going over the rules. Now, are you right-handed or left-handed, Chris? Here we go. First shot to Co. Try and keep the pressure on Daniel. And again, for me, I would feel that this side would favor Daniel Maciel. Sorry, my mic was on mute. Thought I answered. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Oh, no. Well, we'll see if you're a prophet. You said the first miss was going to be costly. Well, that is costly. And I just finished saying that this side, for me, would favor the left-hander. Yeah, slightly, in my, in my opinion, he slightly jabbed at that ball, which kind of made it more of a punchy stroke, and that's why it didn't really take the ball into the pocket. So uh, we'll see how, how Coe's stroke looks on this one, but he gets through the ball so well, it's, it's hard, to, hard to beat. Well, the match is in his hands now. If he completes his four innings with four... Pocketed tens. Nothing Daniel can do but shake hands. And I think it goes without saying that everyone now is a must make for the tall Polish star. Yeah, I favor him to make this one. this one he will seal his win or he'll make it to where he can't be beat in this stage he can only be tied if he misses the next one too
Well, there yeah. you go. Three Oakley. for three. Yeah, it just doesn't look like missing, does he? No, it just it looks so fluid and natural. And every time I talk about it, I know I sound like it's the first time I've ever seen it, but uh, it's just it's something to replicate and practice. And you know, it's uh, it's amazing to watch. Uh, it just comes down to this. If Konox is 10 in, they shake hands. If he doesn't, then Daniel has to make the 10 to tie. So it's all on Ko. This 10 for the match win. Dead center of the pocket. And just as we thought, the one miss was going to be pivotal. Ko Ping Chung through to the last 32. There will be a redraw, so he doesn't know who he plays yet. But sudden death elimination now. He has survived the scare. And for Chris Reinhold, I'm Jim White. Chris, we slide over to table number two now, where it's going to be ladies action front and center. We've got about 45 minutes, pal. I will see you over at table number two. Folks, hope you enjoyed it. There'll be a lot more pool action coming your way. Don't go too far.